What's up, Fishaholics? Welcome back to the channel. For you guys that uh, have been following my channel for a while, uh, you guys know that I like to solve problems and basically pass the information that I come up with to you guys so you don't have to go through the same mistakes and same issues and rough goes that I have. So today, I'm gonna be talking about the motor guide foot pedal compatible with the XI3 and the XI5 trolling motor. On my recent video, or maybe not so recent, but one of my last videos, I talked about uh, how I got rid of it because the thing sucked. I Meaning if you guys already bought one and you have messed around with it, you know it's not very user friendly, I should say. But thanks to my guys over at Fun and Sun in Hearst, they gave me a foot pedal so that I could tinker with it and experiment and get me get it working uh, properly. Now I've looked on YouTube and I like before and I'd heard that, you know, people change the springs out and I wanted to go ahead and show you guys how to do that as well as give you guys some tips on how to, to view this foot pedal. Now let's take a step back. I want to change your mindset whenever you think about this foot pedal you know because if you like me i got the thing i got frustrated with it because it turns too fast and you know it's not very sensitive just not not user friendly at all so i sent that thing back but by getting the, the pedal from fun and sun and being able to tinker with it figure out what to do with it i want to change your guys mindset first don't think of it as a foot pedal Cause if you're used to like i was i was used to you know a foot pedal where i sit up there and i step on it and kind of inch my way, you know, use it to guide and, you know, the traditional foot pedal. And so when you jump up on that, uh, the motor guide foot pedal, you get to turn it and it's just not the same. So and you ended up getting rid of it or stepping back and you use the remote control, you know, more often and you just kind of get used to that. But what I want to do is have you guys think about, not think about the foot pedal as a foot pedal, but think about it as a foot controlled remote. With that being said, you think about button taps rather than easing down to, you know, to turn it faster or slower because one tap is equal to the same thing. It's like a button tap on a remote. You hit it this way once, it inches that way. You hold it a little longer, it turns a little longer. So with that being said, you think about it that way and, you know, you should get more, a more used to a more comfortable reaction out of it. Also, those, they change the springs because those springs are so freaking stiff. It's like, ugh, you have to mash it hard for it to even turn. So by the time you mash it, you get it down and it's going to fly way to one side or fly way to the other. So by changing those springs, it's an easier tap, let it tap, and you can, it's more controlled tap. But I'm going to dismantle this thing and show you guys all of the springs and the specs and everything that I did to make my modifications. And hopefully you guys will have a more pleasant experience with this thing. And uh, your motor guy foot pedal won't be such a waste of money. Let's get to it. Also, for those who have a recessed foot pedal and bought this thing, I did another hack for this. I put this leather on it so that it wouldn't bother me. But all I did was put in a, all I did was put in a wooden plank to where it would, you know, park down in the corner here to kind of butt up right against there to kind of level it out as, as you saw it before. But that's all I did for that. So, and I'm screwed it to, mounted it to it. Let's go ahead and get to dissecting this thing. These are your original springs. They are one and three quarters in length and three quarters in diameter. They are some pretty stout, sturdy springs. And I cannot, I repeat, I cannot squeeze that with my hand. It's just impossible. So there's two or three things that you're gonna need. You're gonna need a hammer or a mallet, uh, a skinny screwdriver or a long bolt that's the same diameter or less than this. Uh, and that's the pin that goes through here from side to side. So what you wanna do is knock that pin out and leave all of this alone. You wanna take off the bottom. Of course, you wanna undo these screws. So you'll need a Phillips head screwdriver. I'm gonna use my drill. Got your battery compartment there. You can leave the batteries or you can take them out just to be safe. Make sure your waterproofing stays in. Now, while I got this thing backed apart, I'm gonna go ahead and explain to you guys how this thing works. So this little chip here, this little red thing is a sensor. There's one on each corner here, one, two, three, four. And these little levers right here, oh, I'm pulling that out, you don't wanna do that. These little lever, each, they each have like a little, something glued in there so i'm imagining this is it's a sensor inside there this one has it and this is the the back of the foot pedal and 
on the front side of the foot pedal. This one, this one connects to it from this side. So actually, that's the back of the foot pedal here, connects to it on the top side, and this one connects to it from that side. So when they touch, that's when it gets the signal to move or do something. Same thing with these buttons here, the buttons on the side here, same thing. Anyway, so that's how it works. So keep that in mind. It's like basically like pressing a button. So whenever you press that button and it, the lever touches uh, the sensor, then it gets a signal of what you want it to do. So keep that in mind, guys. So simply, you're just going to pop that pin out of there. And it's not that hard. I'm trying to do this while I'm staying in, in shot, but it's really not that hard. It's not in there that tight. See? It's already out. Knocked it out enough. <clears throat> Pull it out on that side. You know, be sure not to, you know, move anything that you don't need to. Um, but this comes out or it comes up. And you're going to have to pull this little tricky lever right here. So basically it just backs up off of this little hook like so. And then it releases the spring there. And uh, you kind of press this spring and pull it out. Keep up with that little spring because that's going back in there. And uh, so I've essentially exposed the springs that I've replaced this with. So the thing that's important is these are the same diameter, three quarters in diameter. You want that to be the same regardless. Now, if you can get a one and three quarter spring that's softer and more you know, gentle to the touch, <laughs> easier to compress, by all means, go for it. But I went with a slightly longer spring. So this is a two inch spring instead of one and three quarter. Same three quarter diameter that fits right inside here. As you can see, this is much easier to press by hand than the other ones. Let me see if I can do this one with, with the palm of my hand. Yeah, you can't get it. Much easier to press. All right, hey guys, check out my wristband that my daughter made for me at her graduation party, our pic slash picnic. Fifth grade graduation, guys. Not the big one. You have a few more years for that one. But let's get this thing put back together. It's quick and simple. And uh, these springs cost me maybe a buck twenty-five a piece at the local hardware store, and uh, it's not too much of a hassle or too much of a cost. But you make sure you want to make sure you line these things up. So this is a plus sign right here on the bottom part of that. There's a plus sign. And there's also a plus sign in here, and that's basically what these springs go around. So once you fit it in here, and then you put them, line up the plus signs on this side. That's this is the, probably the trickiest part is getting those lined up properly. Not that hard, but kind of tricky. You squeeze that down and start your pin back in there. Make sure it stays lined up. You just want to tap it back through. Simple as pie. Now, let's get this thing back in. Oh, turned it the wrong way. Spring down. That hook in there, and voila. Working just as functional as before. I'm telling you, man, this only takes about 10, 15, 20 minutes to do, and uh, it'll make your life a lot easier. It, ain't make, it doesn't make life perfect because it's still not a foot pedal, but it's a foot control remote, and if you keep that in mind, you'll have a better experience with it because uh, it'll get you out of those tight jams. And when you got a fish on the line and you need to turn your motor, you can do it with your foot instead of reaching and grabbing the remote. But uh, let's get these this panel put back on and get it mounted back to the boat. And uh, we're done. So I got this thing placed back in the little cubby where it goes. Got my leather covering it up so I don't see that wood. Uh, you can use a metal piece but or even a piece of plexiglass. but you know, I had some scrap leather laying around and some scrap wood laying around, so that's what I used. Well, guys, that wraps up my video. I uh, hope you guys learned something or I was able to uh, help you guys out on that. If you haven't already, like and subscribe to the channel. We got more videos coming up that are helpful. Like I said, I make the bonehead mistakes and you guys get to learn from it. But uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't again. And uh, until next time, never let up.